What's up guys, welcome back to another video. I got a new one for you today. We're gonna be doing some of these little lamb chops. Look at these little things. Look like little T-bone steaks, but something different today is Sunday. We're gonna have Sunday dinner. We're gonna get it going, stay tuned. All right, guys, let's look at these lamb chops. Now you have some of them that have the bones in it, like real long, but these little things, these are a different style of chop, and that's exactly what are chops, just like little T-bones right here. You see the little bone going through here. And lamb, it's, a, it's kind of a little gamey meat, but we're gonna be putting these on, and it shouldn't take long to cook today. Let's show you what I got today, what we're gonna use for the marinade process. So I got some fresh garlic, and that's about two tea, teaspoons right there, already chopped up for you guys. And just to show you what else I have, I got some fresh rosemary and thyme right there. So I got about two tablespoons of rosemary and a tablespoon of thyme. And we're gonna have about a fourth of a cup of red wine vinegar. We got some SPG we're gonna be using, salt, pepper, garlic for you that do not know. And we're gonna use about two tablespoons or so, maybe or so, or so of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and put this uh, marinade together and get it going first. Let's go ahead and put that right there so you guys see what I'm doing. Go ahead and get you a bowl or a measuring cup. We're gonna go ahead and pour this olive oil in there, get it in here. We're gonna do about two to three tablespoons. And I'm gonna call it right there. That's about it, right there. And that just takes time just with cooking, kind of eyeing it and knowing what you're doing. Let's go ahead and throw that thyme and rosemary in there. And if you got, you know, dry thyme in the closet, that might work. Um, it probably will work a little bit, but fresh is better. You can smell, smell the aromatics coming from that right there. Let's go ahead and let's get some of this garlic going. Get a little picked up. Pick this up a little better for you guys. Get that picked up right there. Pour that in there, Oop, a little chunk. Let's pour that red wine vinegar in there. All right, so we're gonna take our whisk and we're gonna give a good stirring or whisking, as you say. Get that all mixed up so all that can combine. And that's about it. So we're gonna keep the flavor simple, like I said. We're gonna use SPG, because they already got a little flavor to them of its own. I want the lamb to stand out a little bit. I want to hit it with a whole bunch of different rubs. So let's go ahead and give this a little sprinkle. You don't want to overdo these. Just hit it on one side. Turn them over. Just like that. I can already smell that little marinade right there. Give it another little shake. And that's about it. And now, go ahead and get your marinade. Make sure I got it mixed up good again. And we're gonna pour it over. And you know, we'll mix it up with our hand to kind of spread it out. Make sure everything's coated. Get everything you got into your bowl or your measuring cup all in there. So what I'm gonna do now is get these all mixed up, just like that. Get it coated, as you per se. And we're gonna let these sit in the refrigerator for about an hour, then we'll take them out and we'll go ahead and let them come to room temperature before we place these on the grill. Get that all coated, it's on that other side right there. Some of the sides. I want a little bit of rosemary thyme on everything and garlic. If you see some, just put it on top there. But that should be it right there. Throw that in the fridge for about an hour, two hours. If you want to do it all night, you can if you want. But minimum an hour. And we're going to, like I said, come back out. We'll have these out already resting in room temperature. And by the time I come back, we'll be throwing them on the grill. 
Stay tuned. All right, guys, so we're going to make a little chimichurri sauce while the lamb chops are sitting in the fridge. It's been about 30 minutes almost. So let's go and let's see what we got here. And it's real simple ingredients. And we're going to use this. You can use it as a marinade, but which you already know we made a marinade. You can use this for basing purposes or you can use it for like a little sauce that goes over the meat at the end. So I have some about half a cup of some finely chopped parsley right there, flat leaf parsley, whatever you want to use, curly leaf if you want to use some about a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. I have some red pepper flakes right here. And I'm sorry if you can see this. I got some about a teaspoon of coarse sea salt. And then of course, about two teaspoons of fresh garlic. And then last but not least, about we're gonna use about two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. So let's go ahead and put our dry ingredients in. Right there, get that off to the side. Let's go ahead and get some garlic. Get your garlic in there. Put our red pepper flakes. And of course salt. And, and you can add more salt if you want in the end. Taste it. And then we're gonna put some about two teaspoons of red wine vinegar. Okay. Olive oil. And all that in there. And you can put this in a um, food processor if you want. It'd be a lot more finer. But I'm going to do it with a whisk. I like the little chunks. And I'm going to go ahead and get that a good stirring. Get all those flavors in there. And that's about how it should be looking right there. We're going to let this sit until the meat is cooked so all the flavors can come together real well and then we'll be serving it with it that's how you should make chimichurri sauce it's gonna be good all right so we're out here at the grill and basically what i did is took a chimney of hickory lump charcoal got it hot got it gray that's how you know it's hot laid it out on the bottom of my racks on the very bottom spread it out threw my grill grates on top and I think once it came up to 400, we're ready to go. You want this good and hot. They're not going to take that long. All right, so now, now that the uh, grill grates are hot, I want to hit it with a bit, little bit of this duck fat right here. I love this stuff. Go and get that sprayed on there. The reason I'm using my grill grates is because I don't want it to burn right over the fire. These are not going to take that long, okay? So I'm just going to take one of them, use my hands right here. Place that down like that. And you want to go ahead and get all of these on here. Get them spread out. And what I'm going to do, once I get these all on here, I'm going to cook them about two to three minutes aside, and I'll be checking for an eternal temp of 135. And once they're done, well, I'll go ahead and take them off. Go ahead and give this a close. There you go. Make sure your vents are open at the top. And once that's set, check it about three or four minutes and we'll go ahead and flip them. All right, so it's been about three minutes. I think these things are ready to turn over. Let's get this going up. I'm gonna take one. Oh yeah, that looks good. Look at those grill marks right there. That's what I love about these grill grates. They make some awesome grill marks. Wow. Looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and try them for temperature. And see what they are. Take my thickest one, one of my thickest one. And we're looking for about 135. It's not going to take long for these to come up. 112, 107. And your thickest part, 110, 107. They're all about the same. 
So that looks good. Go ahead and give this another close. Keep your eye on it and it should be ready to come off in a minute. All right, so I think these things are about ready to go, but we're gonna go ahead and give it a check with a thermopin. I got right here, go ahead and give that open. Ooh, look at those. Those looking real good. I'm sorry for the light, guys. Um, it's getting a little late out here, so let's go ahead and give one a check. Get that in there. 22, 26, 30, 31. And I think those are ready to go. Let's go and get those off. Let's check another one just to be sure. Another thick one. 25, eight, nine, 30. And that's what we want right there. So let's go ahead and get the rest of these off. We'll let them sit. And just remember, let them sit. There might come up a few more degrees from the residual heat that's being, trying to come up right there. I'm trying to sound all smart like a scientist, but I ain't. So just know they're gonna come up a little bit more. And the reason you wanna let them rest, just like you're gonna do steaks, is because you, you basically wanna let all that moisture come back into the meat and let the muscles relax. Let's get this, go ahead and get this closed. Hope I don't struggle with it no more. Get the thermal pan set down, and we're going to take these in. We're going to let them sit about 10 minutes, and we'll go ahead and serve them up. All right, so these things are about rested about a good eight to 10 minutes. I'm impatient, I'm ready to cut these right now. So let's go ahead and get one. Let's just see what it looks like inside. Try not to hit that bone. And that's what you want right there, look at that. Good medium rare, medium, if you would say. More medium on the ends. I think those are perfect in my eyes. Go ahead and give this a cut, see what it tastes like. Haven't had lamb in so long. Mm, 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 mm. You know what? I think we take some of this chimichurri sauce. Go ahead and put a little bit, dab a little bit on there, there. Take that. Mmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Hey. Phone's ringing in the background. Somebody's trying to call us. They probably want to eat. Hope you enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Till next time, toothpicks, lamb chops.